breathe. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Jake's gone. <laughs> Greetings and welcome, ladles and gentle frogs, to that. I'm a ladle. Yeah, and Shiver's a gentle frog. I Look. identify as a spatula. Spatulas oh. are great. They are. I've actually, like, I've, I've actually, I can't be a spatula then. I've actually started finding that um, some of the best hey, uh, kitchen utensils that I have are actually from IKEA. Uh, they uh, have like these these tongy things that have like little rubber at the end. Great. I've got two of them just because I use them f for all of my cooking. I love little tongy things. Um, yeah. Also known as tongs. Tongy things. <laughs> I guess you could call them tongs if you really wanted to, but why would you want to do that? Uh, Shivers sitting, shitting, knackered. Eric's eating all the crackers. David's got no time for this. Patch 3.7's featureless. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the relay station. Uh... I mean, you just TLDR'd the entire podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wasn't it great? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's it for our show this week, yeah. folks. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Been great having you. We'll see you next week. If you want the long version, our Sun Jammer. See ya. <laughs> Back to the trap. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Hello, everyone. Okay. Thanks for coming to chat with us. I don't know if anyone else can hear that, but there's there's someone being axe murdered upstairs. Oh, that's probably not good. Generally, uh, axe murders are, are considered a negative thing. Uh, actually, uh, Mrs. Eris and her sister are playing Donkey Kong um, Tropic Freeze or whatever it is. Okay, that's fine then. And they're going nuts. Which is cool. You should have said they're going bananas. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I literally don't know where I want to start this week. Uh, at the so let's start at the beginning. Uh, Shiver, how, how's your week been? Long, arduous, and busy. Fair. Nakara, how about yours? Arduous, long, and busy. Hmm. Fair enough. How was your week? I had allergies that were so bad that I had vertigo and I had to stay in bed for two days. So that was fun. Oh. Great. So we've added ill to long, yes. arduous, and busy. Yes. <laughs> ill gets added. Um And then I decided to watch some Star Citizen videos. How'd that go for you? Correctly. <laughs> ah, He's all right. I, we're going to have like to talk. There's two I, Davids on the podcast right now. There are two Davids, but I can't reliably make the face that that David's making. So I'm having that David make that face for me. So that I don't have to. That's uh, fair. I, I'd like to pass the motion that that face becomes officially known as shit the goddamn. It is. Yes. Yeah. It is. Um, You're not doing too bad of a job of it right now. <laughs> little, you know, you're erring a little bit towards constipated more than frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, hey thank, thanks 30 people for coming to watch us. Yeah, I, I, really appreciate uh, it. I don't know why you're here, awesome. but <sighs> now don't fucking say that again. Someone took you seriously last week on YouTube <laughs> and you're not. <laughs> people don't get that you're joking when you say that. Wait, I'm joking. Yeah, usually. Oh, uh, OK, let's just let's dive right into it. Let's talk pillar talk now. Hey, Bob. Um, 
first, I want to know what you guys think of Pillar Talk. Uh, Nakara, your thoughts on the Pillar Talk episode? On this one or the idea in general? On th- Actually, yeah, on this one. On this one. Okay. Uh, that was fine, but they obviously were just... Basically, they were trying to explain what is a schedule realignment. Um... And I kind of saw this coming for a while. I'd, I'd sort of had this thought in the back of my head because we're basically, um, as they talked about in the show, uh, they've been running into bad situations where their patches are slipping out a couple weeks and then their next patch has to try and catch up and it can't. So that one slips out a couple weeks. And it was a bad situation and it was also happening in Squadron. And so they were just like, we need to fix it. So we figured out how to fix it. Now we have to explain how what we did to fix it. But it's going to suck in the short term. Here you go. That was basically it. Um, sure. And it was short. <laughs> Anything to add? I, I completely agree with um, Nakara and Elise93. Elise or Elise? I, I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. Uh, a 30 second mes- message stretched out to 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Hey, There's also four. How's it going? Um, but on the on the other side, they did tell us, you know, they did they did get Aaron, they wheeled him out, and they, they were <laughs> upfront and honest about it. Yeah, I love the idea of wheeling him out, like yeah. like uh, you know, stop Frank fucking and, working and come here, like Frankenstein's monster. Just yeah, like, and that's good. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start with some of my. I'm gonna I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start into this one. Uh, they should not have called it Pillar Talk. It had nothing to do with the pillars of the game. And there were only two pillars of the game creators. Uh, I know that they have that name existing, but half of the arguments or half of the complaints on YouTube is, I was expecting like a full pillar talk. What is this? It's not thing. And, and even though they sort of mentioned at the beginning that they sort of pulled this one together sort of to explain what they're doing and how they're shifting things, they should not have called it pillar talk because half of the, half of the complaints are that this wasn't a pillar talk. There was no information when, and and there wasn't like, there, there was nothing that needed to be done in a 10 minute video. There's actually a much better, a post by Zylo on the RSI forums yep. that explains much better what the hell it is they're doing. They should not have released that video. It should not have been called Pillar Talk. It's garbage. Um, I, if When it comes to Pillar Talk, the entire point of Pillar Talk is it's supposed to try and replace the still horribly absent 10 for the chairman or 10 for the developers or producers or whatever. It's give us information on the actual development of the game. What's happening? What's coming? Where are we with the things that that are still friggin' absent seven years in? That's what Pillar Talk should be. And it's, it's really unfortunate that they wasted that and created a lot of anger by calling this crap that. Go Shiver. I, I saw comment on youtube i don't know if true or not that's what i'm hoping to find out is this wasn't like a proper pillar talk yeah we're going to still be doing yes a proper sit down and post analysis of 3.6 sometime in the future still is that is that accurate i don't know if that's accurate but i believe that's so that that's something at least but i do quite agree with you what how was this a pillar talk it was more of a you know that episode of South Park where they're taking the piss out of the BP oil spill and you got the CEO and he's just, you know, doing all sorts of things like, we're sorry. It was it was that. Mm-hmm. Basically. Bryce Serena, for, for people that do like that small lens into the game development, it is it is nice that they went into that change. And don't get me wrong, they need to go into this change because it is a large change to the development, but it's not a pillar talk. It's they shouldn't have used that moniker because that moniker got people thinking, ooh, we're gonna get some some actual information when what we got was, hey, we've sort of fucked up. We can't we we were too aggressive in our forecasts. We can't do it. We are basically gonna have to have 
our plans for uh for the patches and what they basically have to do is they have to have it right like they have to what they have to have oh, the have content it. have yeah. sorry it's it's a weird it's a weird one to pronounce they have to halve it uh i, I can't say they have to half it they have to well, have. To be clear, they're only they're only really decimating three point seven. Well, they I decimated three point seven. Three point, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, the other but hasn't it probably unaffected? Has it now not got some new stuff that wasn't in yes. before? That's a little which bit is, interesting. Which is definitely interesting, but weird. In Sunjammer very appropriately in our one of our staff chats brought up where did this stuff come from? Yeah. So <laughs> I I, I want to actually jump into that because sunjammer in in our one of our staff chats did a like a really good investigative deep dive on uh exactly what what aaron said um so content teams are working to a different cadence they're not delivering every quarter um same with a lot of the environment work. If you're doing a big landing location or planet, it's not something you can fit into a three month or quarterly period. Fine. It needs to be six month period. Okay. Um, but then he's saying that they, they had some features that went a bit longer. Mining was one. The original set of mining went through and it takes them a couple of quarters in the background to get stuff working. It, which suggests that there are two different, at least two different classifications of of teams in CIG, and I think Sunjammer later found that there were. Where is it? One second. There are three different types of team: features, content, and tech. And those, like, we have all this. We have them on record numerous times in the past, I guess, year, year and a half since. They started the quarterly? No, year. Fuck, how long has it been? Uh, I have no idea. Maybe Odysseus can tell us. Just a moment. But a uh, year and a half, yeah. Year and a half-ish since they started quarterly. But, so here's here's my problem. I thought that they were always doing this. Uh, like, I never. Or, what do you mean? What I do thought you mean? they were well. They always had stuff that, like, server side OCS or server meshing isn't going to take three months. It's why it's not on the roadmap. It's mm -hmm. for a different patch. Oh, they they have right? always done it. It's that they're doing it for more stuff now. That's all. But but really, they had, all they... It, they, they had to do it for environments. They had to do it for ships. Um, they had to do it for tech, like oh, like server side OCS. And now they're and doing, now they're doing, they're doing it they're for features too. For, now they're planning to do it for more things. There are even some features like mining, which took longer than three months. I know. Um, and and here's where I get to, uh, here's where I get to the real meat of my issue here. Aside from pillar talk, aside from it being really bad optics, aside from. Um, like, come on, guys. Where... Where's the game? I think more and more people are definitely asking that now. I really want to know where the game is. And... And I want to make it clear here. I do not think that CIG are wasting their time. I think that they've got hundreds of people that are working as hard as they can to get this game out. But that's not what I'm asking. Where is the game? Because right now, there's not much, and we don't even really know very much of what's coming anymore. We don't have an idea of features that are coming Every more, we don't have an idea of this is how we're going to do 
uh, repair and overhaul. This is how we're going to do like we don't have any idea of what's happening anymore. All we get are these little tiny glimpses into, oh, here's how this thing that's coming in two months is going to work in in the the inside Star Citizens. But they're so short term, like they're looking so short term that we don't know what's happening. If, if Does that make any sense? Yes. We haven't. It's like you said, I mean, everyone was hoping that this pillar talk was going to be like the last one. They're sat around and they're talking post-release, what they're looking at for pre-release yeah. and giving us at the same time, what the hell is the state of the game right now? And so what you're saying what is you wanted, them to, you wanted them to do this. It is, you just wanted them to call it something else. Or yes, I, I want tack it or tack it on to the end of an, of uh, Inside Star Citizen. Yep, it, yeah, this should okay. not have been its own thing. I I don't like that they had to do it, and I've got serious questions about other parts of it. Like, what the hell is going on with the game itself? Where is the game? But I think that one of their big problems with this is that they went and called it a pillar talk, and it's not. It's them saying, "Sorry, we can't make." We can't meet any of the promises that we made before. We're switching to a new model, right? Like it's just well, them... that's 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 an over exaggeration, in my opinion. It's slight, but well, Tina's asking, do you think this is a precursor to what it expects at CitizenCon? And as you were saying all this, I'm just sat here thinking, you know, from the outside looking in, that perception. Um, I would assume everyone here watching this knows what's going on, you know, as well as anyone could do to a degree with Star Citizen. But if you're on the outside looking in, uh, you just had this meal that people have had to pay money to go for, and you don't understand well enough the fact that there is now also a ship being sold. This was an event that was tied to that, and that's 600 and something dollars. The meal was 200 something dollars, and now you've also got this state where they've prop they've said that X, Y, and Z is going to make it into the game, and it hasn't. And all everyone in the know is like, "Well, fuck it, shit." You know, it's a bit shit right now, isn't it? But that, that's what we signed up for. That's the development. That's how it just goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But on the outside, they're just seeing that hasn't come yet, and they're still demanding more money for that. That hasn't come yet, and they want six hundred quid for this. And and I know that they're like. The one of the big problems with this this switch is like Sunjammer points out in this thread that none of you get to see because I'm special. Um, <laughs> the the biggest anomaly here, and actually I'm gonna see if we can go over and look at. Give me one second here. I need to bring it up. I know I've got it here. Just 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 one second. Sorry. Da, 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 da. The roadmap. Hello, roadmap. Oh, it's giant because of course it is. I wish there was an easier way to like auto fit this to a size. I'm sure there is, but I'm an idiot. Um, here, I'll let you guys watch me doing this manually so that I don't sound quite as dumb. But here's the I mean, roadmap. We, we, we um, can TLDR it as Star Citizen exists right now because of the hype behind it. That is what is the main driving force of course, for it's getting a, it's a lot a of people interested. It's a crowdfunding yeah. project. That is literally and, how they live. Yeah. And that's fine. But right now, the problem is the hype level is up here, and the amount that you can actually do in the game is about here. Yeah. And they need to close the gap a bit, because otherwise... It's, but here's, it's, here's the thing that... You can't keep hyping and not giving anything. Here's the thing that Sunjammer notes, and I think this is an important question to ask. The biggest anomaly in this roadmap here is we've got a whole lot of black in 3.7 whole mm -hmm. lot of black like everything almost everything that was originally supposed to come in 3.7 is out three-fifths of it at least of it. but where did all the stuff that's now in come from um it was being developed in the background guaranteed right but there's and there's tons of stuff in the background that we don't know about enough that they can fill an entire patch with just background stuff well not all of it is so uh, let's take a look just to like, I just, I don't understand what where they got any of this from. And it it's in 3.82. Like, they're taking out a couple things in 3.8 and adding 
new things. Keep in I, mind, they've always been blatantly clear, and they've said a million times that there's a lot of stuff that's not on the roadmap that's being developed. Right. But then so why, that's then, where it is. But then why so even first mention all, that first they're, all, delay, a they're these, switching the... Sorry, go. A couple of these things. Uh, harvestables, we've seen in, in, in Inside Star Citizen repeatedly, so yeah. we knew that was coming. Uh, ship rentals came from 362. Um, IFCS proximity assist, we didn't hear about before. Mission sharing, we've heard about, but we never had it on the roadmap. Personal commodity inventory is just a different name for the physical inventories. Um, FPS mining, we heard about a long time ago, but we haven't heard about forever, and it's apparently boof, there it is. Um, caves, we heard, we've seen we've in seen. Uh, ISC. Yeah. Um, I'm actually really surprised that's coming like in a month. Yeah. <laughs> but but we're getting rid of refueling and power systems. Oh, I'm, and I'm just telling you, like there there is actually a, like somewhere that a lot of these things are coming from. The human combat AI uh, we heard and the dog AI dogfight combat we heard a little bit about in ISC, but we had, didn't have it on the roadmap. So, um, but yeah. I don't so. Know. Sunshimer asks, more, it's, it's, a, it's gonna be a really light patch. I'll put it that way. Sunshimer asks a question that I want to know the answer to, which is Is it possible that some or most of the stuff for 3.7 was being developed for CitizenCon and has only been included in 3.7 because it allows them to lay the other stuff that used to be in 3.7? Yes, I think so. I think that they decided at a production level that they needed to reset because they were falling behind. And so they. Bought themselves a quarter. They asked. They asked the whole company, "What is ready to be released that we don't have on the roadmap?" And they went, and everyone came up with a few things that they have basically done that wasn't on there. And they went, "Here, we'll put this out. This will be a patch, and we'll, you know, do a bunch of performance optimization, which is still on there. Um, and that'll be a patch. And then in three eight, we'll actually be caught up again." Yeah, I think that's the. I th do you do you agree with that, Shiver? I think that sounds accurate, yeah. Okay. But whether or not that's going to turn around and kick... Well, everything oh, else they've tried sure. so far has turned around and kicked them in the ass, really, which is... Is that going to mean Sadly. that they're going to have nothing to show at CitizenCon? Because they also had to delay the Squadron 42 beta by three months. Which we've been talking about. Oh, no, we've like been talking about it, I know. We knew it was coming. I was yes. just waiting. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't kick it out by, by further yeah. than that. Um... Because you could see that things were piling up really bad on them in, in Squadron. I guess uh, here's... I want to boil down my issue as, as much as I can. Okay. I don't like using this as pillar talk, all that, yes. whatever. It's... And it it's fine that they have to do this. I get it. They weren't really hitting their targets and they need to find a way to delay it. And lots of their stuff is taking more than they expected, which is something we expected to happen. But at the end of the day, it's just, I look at the end of this year and I mean, we're going to have some pretty, a couple pretty planets and we'll have some death animations and we'll have a couple harvestables and stuff. But Oh, we'll get, you know, multi-crew will get an expanded turret gunner role. But, but there's still, at the end of this year, too, at the end of 2019, there's still no game. Question. Do you think that there is a large disassociation now between what the players hope and want and what CIG are doing? No, I want... I think we all want the end pro well we all want the end product and that's what they're going for they're going for that end yeah. product but what's the My agreement not we're going to be going about how we get you the end product hand in hand taking you through the whole thing do you, do you do you still feel that that is the case CIG and living up to doing that I feel like they've been getting worse at this being hand in hand uh since 
like the Kickstarter ended, it's been a gradual decline in how hand in hand it is, which is fair because as the community has expanded and grown to, you know, way too many people, it's harder for them to react to us. It's harder for them to be open. And then they bring on video teams that kibosh all the fun videos and feed us nothing. We're not being fed. I know. That's my problem. I'm hungry. I want to be fed. I want some meat in front of me. I want to see meat. I want to see medic gameplay. I want to see what happens when someone loses an arm. Our side, like, I want some meat, man. Give me some meat. He wants meat. Feed me. Feed meat. Feed me meat. Oh, everyone here is like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Shiver, are you okay? Yeah, I didn't know this was your coming out party. Who doesn't yeah. like meat? Like sausages? The people Big, who don't like thick, meat. juicy sausages. Sorry, but sausages are the worst. No, they're the best. They're amazing. The the worst. Amazing. <laughs> sausages are amazing. I get it. I get it. Oh. Hi everybody. How's it going? Okay, so that was a hell of a lot of talk about so can I can I say some things? Yeah, go. One of the things I kind of always found a little bit curious is that and then this is gonna go go back back to my roots a little bit, but um I've kind of always measured the enthusiasm of the community based on funding because a lot of people are really yell a lot, but really when it comes down to it, the only thing that really matters to CIG in terms of is is can we keep making the game yeah. and that comes down to do we make enough money to keep making the game yes <laughs> um, and they're doing fine actually oh. better than expected i'm sure they're doing well, fine i mean if some i i think we all know at least one person who has been back for a long time and may or may not be feeling a bit bummed out a bit bored uh -huh. and wants to just take a break from development that's fine. Just, just just take a break from development yeah. and watching it so close. You know, there's other games out there. Then just chill out. Come back mm -hmm. whenever you you know feel like you're it's... missing it. It will still be here. I, I think the thing with Star Citizen <laughs> right. is there there is it is. Take a break. Have a kid. <laughs> don't 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 do that. That's that, that, that no. Hey, no. you know what? Or, I, I'm or smart. I'm getting case. I'm having my kid during the development, and by the time my kid's like 5'10 can take care of itself, maybe Star Citizen will be out, and I can just leave it to its own devices and play. That's right. <laughs> you got it. You got the whole thing planned out. But... You went through... I, I, yeah. think, I think people interested in Star Citizen go in waves, and as new people come in, right. they're like, oh, this is really cool, and they get really into it, and then they spend money and then a couple years into that they're like ah oh, well i'm gonna be 40 by the time it releases and they get a bit jaded <laughs> and they lose interest and they stop spending money but there are new people that have come in and spent like it's it's cyclical right and then mm -hmm. but that's still not good if you're like I, I guess my question and this is something we can't this is data we cannot get but i wonder if cig has it and I wonder if they have looked at oh, how many, how many have a, active player. Yeah. Well, no, it's not even, not even active player, <clears throat> active backer. And the, mm -hmm. the, um, the age of backers who are, the age of accounts of backers who are spending money. Like mm -hmm. how many backers from eight years ago are spending big dollars is it are are any of them still spending, or is it newer yes. backers that are spending? And I that's guarantee the you, stuff they, I guarantee you, they know that that they do um, that data absolutely. I would love but, to you know, know that. Can I? Um, I'm I'm assuming you didn't watch the Friday Night Show. I did not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no one did. 
<laughs> we had fun. Um, one of the interesting things that came up in conversation there was we were, we were talking about, um, we briefly kind of looked into our account history and we were like, well, when was the last time you bought a ship? And I realized I haven't bought a ship since 2015. Oh God, <laughs> hang on, hang on. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of other people who are very similar and they're just like, well, how know. do I even check that again? Oh, you just go, uh, you just go into your hangar. Yeah, and um, purchase and then use the uh, you can use purchase history or you can use the uh, the you're making me sign in the you can use the drop down to filter by like ships and ship packages and then find the date for those purchases billing or that I don't know what that was. I just went into my hangar and then filtered by. Uh, game packages and then by sh standalone ships and it tells you what the date they were created was my hangar yeah i'm just hoping that there's going to be a decent enough ship that's at a reasonable level that comes out this year that i can still buy before i have to you know next year onwards ask permission from my wife who then says no <laughs> uh, i think i used some credit for a 315p in, well, that was fairly recent, wasn't it? In, in well, that, fairly recent. It was April 2018. Yeah. Um, and then in 2017, I bought a tumbrel for a giveaway that we still haven't given away. Because yeah, we should probably do that. Hey? We should probably do that one of these days. Hey, Jake, where <laughs> are you? Not gonna be, wasn't that going to be whoever guessed your baby's name or time or something? Mm -hmm. I think so, but. I don't know what happened to that. I thought Jake was supposed to set something up for that and then didn't. Yeah, we should we should harass him. You guys should set something up for that because baby's going to be coming soon. Baby is anywhere, anywhere hang from on, like... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't think you quite grasp the concept of running a competition here. <laughs> you don't ask the people who were going to enter to set it up. <laughs> no, you guys. You're not entering. He, oh, he means oh, me and you, Shiver. Oh, oh fuck. You means, guys, should, I preferred means... it when you were asking them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, guys in chat, if if one of you guys can like set up a competition, maybe throw in some prizes for us, that'd be cool. Yeah, okay, no. yeah. well then just say we did it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, capitalism. Okay, let's let's look at some of what happened this week. Why would we do that? I don't know. Because it's what we're supposed to do, I guess, on the show. The okay. the Vanguard variants are coming along. The Vanguard? The Vanguard the Vanguard variants. Um, I really like the blue livery, like the the blue and yellow one. And I know they said these aren't final. They're not. They're not final. Um, because they still have to be proved. But yeah, I really like that one too. It's I nice. like that one. It's cool. Uh, also, again, still really happy to see the Vanguard redone because man that ship was treated poorly the first time am i time turning around. into a miserable bastard because i'm just sat here going it's all right and all but i want some fucking gameplay well yeah something. so do i shiv i'm sorry i'm not losing faith in the project or anything like that it's just for fuck's sake can you please show something <laughs> that's going to make me at least a little bit semi-erect i really 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 like the ui stuff the UI really? has... Yeah, the UI was all right. Do you, know, do you know why? And that's what we're showing right now. The reason is what Zane explained about this. Yeah. The reason they did this is it's is it's like a fully scale... It's a whole new system. It's a whole new set of tools for the design, for the the um, employees there. But it what it, it's so simple to use and so customizable that they designed this so that people who are making the game, like not just the UI people, yeah. but the, the guys who are building features can very quickly just like create a ui in a few minutes for themselves to test out their feature without having to involve the ui team yeah so no, it's, it's a great tool way way faster and you yeah. look at how scalable it is when you watch this it's super cool well and like i i feel like because this is a tool that they're gonna have company-wide you can have like oh we can now the weapons team can start putting little things on your weapons so you can actually go and use the the f to look at stuff and select stuff on your weapon to change settings on your weapon because you've got an energy weapon that you can right like it it it's a good tool to have for the ease mm -hmm. of creating 
uh, menus. Great tool. Yep. It, it was just, it just kind of blew me away because this is exactly what they needed. Yeah. And it didn't surprise me, like, because we hadn't seen a lot of progress on UI in quite a while. Like, I mean, I know there was progress, but it was obvious that they must have been working on something in the background. And now we find out it's this, like, crazy tool to allow and... them to do all these other things. And they're doing a, a texture revamp. Re-class. Yeah, so basically basically what they're doing here is going through all of their uh, materials and textures and making sure that they were as close to realistic as they could. Yep. And to create good. and to, to like update their library and everything. <clears throat> Chat color customizations. Uh, yeah. It's a great idea. It's a great idea, but can we change the color of the UI yet? Mm, not yet. Because that's more important than chat color. I mean, it not is. Just that, but breaking it down and resizing it, moving it around, we want we want all that. Yeah. Hopefully that comes Ideally. together. Hopefully. Yeah. Presumably this will be at least... Okay, let's see if I can get this going with audio. One second. Additional attachments online to complement the scopes that were added in Alpha 3.6. Uh, being able to like attach the suppressor for the cool. LH86 ballistic pistol from Gemini. Suppressors, scopes, underbarrel attachments, and more are just some of the ways the Weapon Features team are working yeah. to let players customize like their this. FPS experience. I also like that Star um, universe. it was it was hard to tell because for quite a while there was like a Jared voice over here. But they actually made it such that the suppressor changed the quality of the sound, but just like a real suppressor in real life, it doesn't make it that much quieter. quieter. It's yep. still pretty punchy, but it changes the quality of the noise. Because, yeah, suppressors in games are often way too suppressed. <laughs> like, way, way more than is realistic. I'm just uh, hoping I can be odd job. The Nautilus? The Nautilus. Announced at a announced and shown for the first time at a uh, money paying private backer event. only event, private event for only people that could be in one specific place in the world and also pay two hundred dollars for a meal. Um, I think we've kind of beat that point to death. I'm never going to stop beating that point up. I have been okay. beating that point up for Shiver, years. Can we talk about the ship? <laughs> well, I quite like it. It looks a little bit homeworldy, doesn't it? But. Yeah, definitely. The only thing that I'm worried about is how 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 treacherous are the minefields gonna be? Is it going to be and, and how um and how much defense do they have in their cells, you know? Would it just be like, oh shit, I didn't notice that I've just flown into a minefield, bollocks, or is it gonna be there's a minefield over there? If I shoot that one there close enough, the whole thing just blows up. This is <laughs> that that actually raises uh my biggest question I always had about Star Wars Episode one. Um, episode one or episode four? Episode one. Oh. And the Trade Federation's blockade of the planet Naboo. And there were like two little stations around the entire planet. Like, I just, I want to know how many mines you'll have to lay to have any impact at all because it's fucking space at least right? 12 at least yeah at least 12 12 yeah. is minimum but even yeah. if you want to block a hyperspace point like wait what you're gonna need so many mines <laughs> we're crossing sci-fi genres. I, I'm, I'm responding i'm responding to fast cart oh, i'm responding to fast cart no it's just well, it's whether or not it's going to cause a matter antimatter breach in the reactor chamber that's what you've really got to worry about, because that might create a singularity. <laughs> We've wandered directly into Star Trek. <laughs> Pretty good episode of Star Trek, but fair enough. Mm, yeah, I'm just glad you knew which one it was from that. Uh-huh. I knew exactly which one. <laughs> um, but... Uh, Visually, I quite like the Nautilus. I really like the idea of sentry mines. Um, I really love a size 7 manned turret on the front of it, because that's ridiculous. just cool. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Uh, 
everything's enormous. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, other than that, I don't like how expensive the ship was. No, nope. you know. Um, they also designed a new net mouse pad. Mm-hmm. Which... Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, what's to stop me doing my own DIY minefield if I just buy enough missiles or something in a freelancer to just whack the warhead, kick it out the back, and have done? Poor man's minefield. You might be able to. I mean, a freelancer miss could probably hold enough missiles to do that. Just yep. empty them all. Well, the question is whether or not they'd actually go go off they ran into them. But that's up to CIG. I don't know. I'm. Uh, we'll see what they do for that. But I, I just I worry that something like the mine layer is going to have. I guess oh, it was in Inside. They were, or yeah, in Inside they were talking about how it like. It's its own kind of gameplay, and it's like it's this really neat, like you're not up front being combat oriented and shooting stuff. You're like you're able to like sort of be more tactical on things. And I'm just it's not being more tactical, are, it's, it's, but it's, it's about pla- being defensive. But planets are huge, and space is huge, and and yeah, but there's it's not there's just that be for defending planets. No, but there's the fallacy or the, like the big problem with like um friggin uh star star wars uh and that stupid like let's get us through an asteroid field lanorth the... explained that one to me what i can't remember what the explanation was but i know he explained it to me and i felt okay okay i'll give that but oh, there's so much space it. in space asteroids aren't close together and mines like I don't know. I just at, um, the, at the cost of laying those mines, the number of mines you're going to need, and the number of trips you're going to need to go restock mines. They actually talked about that a little bit. I know. Um, they also talked about how it is yet another thing that you're going to need an exploration ship for or a tracking ship for. Yes, and, which is good. Yeah, and I um, do like that they won't be visible. Not to normal scanners, but they will be to uh, good scanners. Yeah. Like, on a decent ship. Um, like an exploration ship. Uh, my question is how... My question about the mines is, can you lay them in atmosphere? Do they have the ability to maintain their spot in the atmosphere? My, my question you could, is, why is the you ship could, This ship's gorgeous. Oh. You know what it looks like, kind of? Uh, the Reaper from Mass Effect. Hmm. It also definitely reminds me of some uh, Star Wars ships. Yeah. It's got the, the similar shape. Yeah. <clears throat> the flying triangle. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, very much. We don't need to obey any of the laws of physics, so it looks cool. That's it. Well, in, in, in space, you kind of don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually... So a lot of people were pissed off at Chris Roberts at the beginning because a lot of the ships at the start look like planes. And they're like... <laughs> it's in space. It doesn't matter what shape it is. You know what else is in space? Yep. ...needs to exert themselves. <laughs> Planet? Die. As well as the yeah, so this to make is, that uh, superhero landing. They've the upgraded the their, their sounds for uh, dying in your own helmet. That sound makes <laughs> Which is good. Yeah. As your oxygen and is falling or your space character continues to exert themselves. The superhero landing. <laughs> I liked. I did like that reference. As well as the mm-hmm. tech to make that superhero landing on the surface of a planet or a moon. Getting a moon credit. They sure oh, do planets good. They do planets good. They do sa- They do a lot of things real real good <laughs> they just like made a game that's enormous they made a game that's enormous it looks <laughs> gorgeous it's got it sounds amazing there's a lot to it there's just no game here's yeah. my question orison is 76 percent done and it's almost a year out why 
Sunjammer, that is a lie and you know it. They do communication good. <laughs> no. They, they communicate. I'll give them that. Yes. There are lots of companies that don't, so they're above all of those companies. They their biggest problems they've ever had are related to communication. Actually, all of their biggest, um, like, uh, what are what are they? Uh, what are those things that are bad and people talk about for a long time? Scandals. Yes, all of CIG's biggest scandals have been related to communication. Because very rarely are they being the evil overlord. They're, they're just not. not explaining what they're doing. Yes. Some, some of the time. Or explaining it extremely poorly, or they make very rushed decisions that are explained very poorly. Uh, Super 5, the question is actually how much you have to donate to CIG for them to not include loot boxes. Uh, apparently $675 USD. Yeah. Um... Okay. Um, they, so what I was going to mention... The North gives you the explanation there, Eris. You can uh, only take certain paths in the Star Wars universe. Because <laughs> of the way that planets and gravity work. <laughs> Except that space doesn't really work. That's... Like that. but, but Does my it point... in fucking Star Wars! <laughs> <laughs> it, it used to, a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. I see. Different galaxies have different laws of physics. You know, oh, we'll, we'll believe a fucking laser sword. That's fine, yeah. It's <laughs> somehow believable. Met Jar Jar in Palisnas, and we took a part of the way to the sea. And went to the I love that song. See the Queen. We I love even more that the song came out before episode one. <laughs> um, Is it plasma? Because I thought they specifically referred to it in a couple of movies as a laser sword. Oh, no, that might be um, a couple of games that I might be thinking of, actually. I think the I point of... Dark Knight forces to... I really hope, no I hope nobody ever actually makes one of those because they it would just lead to a massive loss of limbs. Limbs would be gone everywhere. Yeah, but cybernetic limbs. As long as the yeah, sand doesn't enough. get in them, you're fine. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to fair questions. Enough. Yeah. Uh, Jarl Ballen says, Hey, Eris, just wanted to say I really love the show, and I think you're a very attractive young man. Why, thank you, sir. Okay. Fastcart says, <laughs> I think it's... I, it <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pronounced Jarl Ballen. Jarl. All right. <laughs> Jarl. I, I, I noticed he's got a second question there. No, it's it's straight on the fast card. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> fast card says, uh, for those of us with bald spots, when you start sweating while eating spicy foods, do your do you wipe your face or the bald spot first? I have neither wow. a bald spot nor a face, so. Yeah, you grew a beard wow. instead of a face. <laughs> Just like me. Uh, fine. Jarl Ballin's second question that Shiver alluded to was, Just kidding, you silly, carrick-hating little old man. <laughs> Which is fair. You're not that little. You're not that little. I'm not that little, but I am no, old and a carrick-hater. You're younger than both of us, so be careful there. <laughs> yeah, but I wait. I, I think I think I'm older than him. Yeah, he's younger yeah, than both. I'm younger of us. than both of you. Shit. He's a, he's several years younger than me. So. But I've got I've got, oh hello. I've got Hi. Uh, I've got one of these. I've got Arms? I've got a this. Hello. Baby. Hi. Um, 
Fastcart says, which was better this week's pillar talk or last week's ISC about the QA team? Last week's ISC about the QA team, 100%. Which was better or which is worse? Which is better? Um, pre alpha baby. <laughs> it I got. I gotta. I gotta repeat something I heard uh, heard yesterday. The production value on the pillar talk was spectacular. <laughs> I liked the focus on the QA team. I thought that. I. I like the QA team. They do a lot of work. Uh, I feel like they should be focused on every once in a while. They are an important part of CIG. Um, and Aaron is not. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I No, I genuinely liked that they focused on the QA team, and I was really disappointed in the hate that people gave them for that. Give them hate for things like crappy pillar talks that shouldn't have been pillar talks don't give them hate for focusing on, on a really important group of the company that they want to spotlight because they're the only group of the company that gets no spotlights whatsoever they do though i know but like once every year and a half yeah bryce arena asks while i understand this game needs money to develop Considering they burn roughly 30 mil a year-ish, do you think that some of these ships are a bit too expensive? When was the last time they had a real ship that was below $60? Oh, um... There are only a few. And those, those are the ships that are going to be the most popular, the cheaper ones. Um... Let's see here. Probably the last ship introduced that's under a hundred dollars. I'm talking like real real ships. I'm I'm assuming are ones that fly. Yeah, not not a snub. Um, not also. not snubs. So we're looking at like the arrow and the and the hawk. That's a long time ago. Yeah, the arrow and the hawk look like the last two that were introduced. I think in the MPUV, which has been around forever. Now, again, CIG have said a number of times, and this is one of the problems, I suppose, with the way that they are developing things is they build the biggest and best first. So the biggest and best miner is the Orion, the biggest and best uh, salvage vehicle is the reclaimer. The biggest and best mine layer is the, wedge of cheese whatever it's called um i i think they've got a lot of the standard ships and now they're trying to do the biggest and best for new types of gameplay that come without like like i, I and this is just an idea off the top of my head i don't know where it came from but like what if they, because I've got all these questions about mines and the eff efficacy of mines in a game as large as Star Citizen when where space is virtually infinite. And like, it'd be really, really cool if they like did some kind of like document where they explained their rationale behind a mine layer and their rationale behind like how it would work and where you could lay mines and when how that gameplay would work. They could even call it like a design document or something. No. You're crazy. Remember when... Do you remember? Do you guys remember when new ships that they were announcing came with design documents? Like, full-on design documents? Remember explaining design documents? Explaining it? Do you remember? We remember. Whoa. Is he okay? No, he's having a stroke again. Oh, again? Jeez. Yeah. Everyone. Uh, Ashley asks, have you ever seen diegetic UI, as in UIs that exist within the game world, done better than in Star Citizen? Mm. Um, I, I remember really liking Dead Space. I wouldn't say better, but as good. Probably. There were some great games the, out there. 
I can't remember the first game I actually played that had that in there. I, but I do remember the UI and thinking, my God, this is fucking awesome. Um, it was just a couple of little crappy clicks. Probably would have been a, a one of the Amiga. <laughs> one of the things that one of the series that always did it really well is Fallout. Yeah, because well, they the Pip the Pip Boy Pip Boy. Yeah, once they got to the the three D ones, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Naughty Lus asks, "Will I be able to hack the minds to rebel against their master?" Hopefully, yes. That would be awesome, and I would imagine they would go that that deep. Yeah, eventually. Hopefully. Now, if they want to go really deep, hopefully you can sneak onto someone's Nautilus, hack their mines while they're still in the bays, and then when they launch the mines, the mines activate, and they're already, like, they angst, angst the mines. They're already really, like, teenagers, and they hate their parent, and they attack them. Um <laughs> All right. So small insight into Eris's teenage years. I mean, so to to, be, to better answer that uh, that question from a bit ago there. Um, I mean, it's been a long time since they made a ship below sixty dollars, but the Anvil era was ten months ago, and it was seventy five. So not too, not terrible. They've also. <clears throat> Well, so here's what we should be asking. We shouldn't be asking when's the last time we had a cheap ship because they've got a bunch of cheap ships. They've got um, yep. the Aurora, the Mustang, the Reliant. They've got the uh, the Herald is reasonably cheap. The 315s are cheap-ish. The Avenger, like they, they've got a decent variety of cheap-ish ships. Mm-hmm. The question is, whatever happened to those cheap-ish ships being able to do the same jobs as some of the more specialized ships? Maybe a lot worse, but where is my mine layer for an Aurora? I only want... I, I can only have two mines in it. There's no nothing saying that they won't allow that. I mean, you could just carry the mines on your ship, activate them, and kick them out the airlock. That's... But... <laughs> But you know what? You know what would you know what would tell us if we could do that? If that was a plan, a design, a design document. <laughs> you're talking yeah. crazy talk again. What you really need to do is somehow get uh, Tony Zerovek's cell phone number. And then you're good. No, no. What we need to do is get that thing that Tony Zerovek himself promised us at CitizenCon last year, and then he Disco did not, Land. He promised. He, not he, he promise, walked up he to us and he was like, "Everyone." It. No, I want to talk not. to you for four hours straight and do nothing else. And I'm I'm going to sit down in front of a camera and talk to you for four hours straight. Do you not I remember how, that? I love, I love when the community turns an offhand comment into a promise. <laughs> He's like, oh man, I could talk about multi-career for an entire hour. <laughs> Everyone's like, do it. No, but no, I'm I'm going to get really serious here for a second though. Because oh, guess no, what? The, no, no. Guess what the community fucking needs? It needs something like Tony Zerbeck talking about multi crew for an hour. Because guess what? We know yes. nothing about multi multi crew. Like, I know that he didn't. I was going to say it, gameplay, but multi crew would be gameplay. Like multi crew would if it, be if they ever brought it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if they even told us where they were at with us, if they had Tony Zervex sit down like they used to do, like Chris used to do every two weeks or something, like that's what we're that missing. Fucking ancient town hall they ran, and yep. they said, you know, this isn't anytime soon, but here's what we're thinking of for yes. jump points, and that that was fucking years ago. I yep, love that. that. One more. Five years ago. Five years ago. That's Jeez. when we friggin' started INN. No, it's four years ago because we, yeah, I didn't just begun. So it's four years ago. We've been doing this what shit. Not back. We've been doing this shit for like five years. You, you know that? It'll be, it'll be five years in January. Hi, five years. <laughs> five years yeah. we've been doing this shit. <laughs> Are you all right over there, David? No, I'm having a <laughs> conniption. <laughs> Existential, Existential crisis. crisis. Five years. <laughs> oh. oh okay. Okay. 
Ashley asks, mines and missiles in games have the problem of being either too powerful or useless. How do you think the game could handle that? Balance. But it's definitely yeah, a problem. But, yeah, that that's always the thing with miss that that's the trope with missiles and mines in game is it's yep. a I win a fight button in theory. Full, it full needs of... a bit more balance and chaff and flares. Yeah. You need proper maneuvers to be able to get rid of that. You need to be able to go into an asteroid belt and have the chance that the um, uh, missile is not going to have quite as good a turning arc as you're prepared for and go in, you know, something fun and interesting rather than just chaff. Yeah. There needs to be the, um, the, the possibility that the chaff doesn't work. Mm. Um, yes. Fullo Stan says... Full of stance says five years you'll never get back. Um, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't want those Wouldn't five want years back. back. No. I may be grumpy now time. because I'd like to see something after seven years and I feel like we aren't and I'm start, sort of starting to wonder where stuff is. But in those five years, I've met some of the best damn people I know. I've got uh, some people I consider some of my absolute closest friend in the world, friends in the world, like, like Eric and Shiver here, um, who I love to bits, both of them. I myself have become so much better a speaker. Like if you went back and listened <laughs> to forcing you to do it. <laughs> yes. Because I've been forced to do it. Like <laughs> some of the best people in the world and Shiver. Yes. No, but like <laughs> I do, I do not regret the past five years at all it's not time i want back it's just every once in a while holy shit five years eh yep it's been a while yeah it's been a while uh fast cart uh <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. uh Fastcart says i made this joke last night and got no reaction so i'm trying again I like the look of the Nautilus, but wouldn't the Orion be better at mining? Anyway. <laughs> Rocket um... asks... <laughs> uh, Rocket Raccoon asks a good question. Uh, we've got lots of flora now, but where's the fauna? I very highly suspect it's one of those things that's not on the roadmap uh... that is being developed. I suspect they've talked about it. I suspect we might see some at CitizenCon. I hope. I have a feeling that they're going to get the AI right on the barman first. With, uh, <laughs> like, seriously, they are using the barman Shiver. to test subsumption, right? The and barman, not the barman, the animals. The barman is three years until, away. Exactly. They're not going to release any kind of fora until they've finished on the barman subsumption because that's the test case for subsumption. Which is oh. fucking weird. Why not do the animals first? Sniff butt. Pee on tree. <laughs> well, the problem is that actually, believe it or not, animal behavior is actually quite a bit harder. Um, the barman than just has to clean behavior. glass. Give you well, beer. Barman, more to the you point, know, sniff butt. More to the point. <laughs> tree. Bit weird. More, more to the point, you can actually dress up a human in a suit, get him to put the glass in the bar, and then import that information directly into the game. Good luck doing that to a giraffe. <laughs> How do you get a giraffe in a suit? <laughs> okay, that's the challenge for next week. Uh, Buy your plane tickets, Mr. Shiver. <laughs> Fastcart asks, who here is getting Disney Plus? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, we should point out um, the thing that uh, Fastcart pointed yeah, out to me. There is, there is a three-year discount going on right now for a limited time. Mm -hmm. So if you buy three years up, you have to join like the Disney was a D twenty three or something. Yeah, D twenty three. Um, club, but it's free to join that. And if you do, do join that, you can buy three years of Disney Plus up front for thirty thirty three percent off. So one third off. Um, which so it brings it down to like which it brings it down to something silly like. 105 bucks or something american well it's it's 140 dollars us 141 dollars us but that's like 390 a month yeah which is pretty good uh okay where am i next question jupiter's rooster asks 
Uh, what type of concept ship would you like to see next? Size and roll. Well, this is interesting because I never thought we'd we'd have a mine layer. Really, I mean, I always it was always in the back of my head, but I kind of didn't think they would do it. So it kind of opens my mind to other weird things they might do. Do you have any thoughts, Shimmer? Like to see. I, I, I suppose I should scale it back a bit because I would genuinely like to see another one man craft that is top end seventy five dollars. I want more variety in the starter ships and thing. Because you're gonna see them most of all, I think. And I want you know, you'll get bored seeing the same you know, few dozen that we have. Right, more than a dozen, but more There's variety. a lot. Hmm. I, 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 like a two man Avenger. Well, I, that would be pretty neat. A two man starter ship that isn't a reliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, what's the cheapest, uh, MISC ship? Uh, oh, the Hull series is the low end for the, uh, for MISC. Yeah, right. Forgot. The Hull A was pretty cheap. You know what I'd like to see? And the Reliant, of course. What's that? I'd like to see something historical. But how do they make a historical ship modern? No, like, like the Zeus. Yeah, I, I don't see... want them. To, I don't want them to sell it. I want them to do it like they do with the the Vanduul stuff. Have a recreation. I can see that. Yeah, that's the only way I, I would be cool with it. I think that the Zeus, no, but like something earlier, something worse that is purely there for window dressing. I kind of there hope they a... would just have one floating in space, and there's Definitely. this guy in there called Ruck Bodgers, <laughs> and he's just just got to acclimate to life from being in the past. Ruck Maybe Bodgers, we get him a, eh? Ruck Bodgers. We can get him a little robot that goes wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. Actually, we're we're just about done with the questions. We've got a couple more, so I actually want to use this opportunity to ask you guys a question of my own, because <gasps> while we're talking about concept ships and what we'd like to see from concept ships, what I'd actually like to see from concept ships is no more concept ships. Good luck with that. I know, but hear me out. I would like there to be a break in concept ships. I'd like to see... I'd, and I want to know just because we've got mm. we've got so many and i know cig need the money but that's where my question is no, that's not my that's actually not my concern at all my concern would be you don't want that pipeline to stop that's a bad idea not necessarily what are they stop do instead i want i want that's my question so the ships are great but all we get is ships right and I kind of want some ships like held to the side or kept secret or like, and I don't want them to stop making them, but just stop selling them to us for a little bit. And I'm wondering, is there anything else that you think that they could sell? Is there any other way that they could make money if they stopped with the ships? Considering they're the only company to ever figure out that, they, that you can actually develop a AAA game this way, I'm thinking not. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably going, huh? So we did it. No one else has ever done it. Let's not change it. I mean, they sold um, land claims. Yes. Also, has anybody seen the, the Hedeby Salvo Frag pistol yet? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before I, the more I think about answering your question, Eris, every single time I think of something, I'm like, that's just fucking microtransactioning the shit out of the game. And I, they, no, I don't want any of that bullshit. It's bad enough with the, the, the a ship isn't, I mean, the ships are not great. Let's be honest about this, but it's how they've got to make money right now. And when they go post release, I expect them to have. Three ships for sale you can get to get into the fucking game. Um, a fucking um, Aurora, an Orange You're thinking about it wrong. or a Hornet. And then You're... that's it. That's all you can ever buy. After that, you just buy all the crappy cosmetics or in-game currency. After that. Like Guild Wars. That's what but, I'm but that's what we have to come up with. What is acceptable for them to, to 
well, right I... now, fuck all. <laughs> Simply, quite frankly, there's not enough because you need a fucking game for someone to be interested in cosmetics. Eve can get away with selling a fucking monocle for eighty dollars because they've been out a good long while and they've got an entire game. Now, no offense to CIG or Star Citizen, but I don't want to buy an eighty dollar monocle for the little gameplay that's there. It's not going to work, sadly, and that's going to give really bad perception. Sorry, I went on a bit there. I apologize. No, no, that's okay. Wow, you're you are Canadian. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> didn't they didn't they sell a top hat in a monocle? Uh, I think it was a flare. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah, it was the concierge. I thing. mean, you could buy it, but most people just get them through subscription. They gave it to subscribers, but or was it concierge? Might have been. It was oh, was it was given away to concierge? Was, okay. It was a concierge With the thing. black card. Same time as yeah, the black card. I think so. Yeah. Right. Um. I I think it was more at release Super Five. I, I don't think... know. I'm 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 genuinely. One of my other question is, what are they going to sell? In the end, and are they going to sell so much that? That's their hope, isn't it? It worked for Guild Wars and Guild Wars 2. And that wasn't a shitty game. Nope. The question, the problem is, is that they've set this up to the point where it's hard to see what else they could sell because this is kind of how it's all been designed. Now... I would suggest that maybe they could get into selling things like, uh, like, um, like base packs. Like this is um, all the stuff you need to build a base. I'm um, using the Pioneer, um, or maybe something like mining equipment for like large scale mining. I don't know though, because all that stuff is inc is supposed to be incredibly expensive. So you'd be like, they would like release it and it'd be like $20,000 and people would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um, they could try selling, um, they could become more serious merchandise seller. Uh, it sounds the like they might, hopefully. Though, is it cuts into a bit of their profit, whereas yeah. whether it's a digital sale, it's, you know, better cut profit. They could make, they could, I mean, one thing they could do if they actually felt like it is make models of all their ships and sell them. Aren't they slowly like, doing that with JR? Well, they are, but they, they probably don't make that much money on that. If they in-house did and made and, and like hired a company, not in-house, but like hired a company to make all, models of all of their ships. They the would, other, the that's, other, like, that's like 120 yeah. models. Again, Who until they JR? fix, until they fix their, uh, until they fix the shipping costs no nope. oh i know that's the problem they also need to decrease shipping yeah because it's just ridiculous right now okay Although, has, anyone, has, anyone, has anyone checked if that's changed because apparently they changed merchandise providers recently i don't think it's fixed yet but i hope that when they come out with this new line of merchandise it might be i'm hoping there like, was like, something they did change about the merchandising, and uh, it, it was Fastcart that found this out. He <laughs> yes, wanted to great. get the oh, what was it? He wanted to get the digital uh, shirt. goodies pack and the shirt, um, yeah. but they couldn't combine the order. So he bought some credit with the intention of buying the T-shirt with the credit, only to discover after he made the purchase of the digital goodies that you are unable to use store credit to buy physical goods now. Really? Yep. Yep. Which makes I, sense. Don't get me wrong. I didn't think you ever could do that. Oh, no. They, they, you, wrong. You, could. you could. They did that because when people melt, they get credit and they don't have that money anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. I know why they did it. It's yeah. just, you should have mentioned it instead of just doing it. Uh, um, so let's. I've got three more questions. I want to get through those. Is that okay? Or did you have something, Nakara? 
my biggest complaint about honestly and it's a pretty simple thing my biggest complaint about the merchandise is that you can't put more than one thing in your cart so every time you buy something you have to pay shipping on it separately it's funny because that's like something that people are crucifying epic game store for and they've only yep. been out for like a couple months yeah but their business is selling games cig's business is not selling merchandise uh excuse me cig's business is selling shit <laughs> it's selling ships that are digital goods they're not it's not selling mer physical merchandise it and be. i actually asked i actually asked them i'm like is this a is this like a, like a bug or something and they're like no that's just how it works like okay yeah Okay, I want to go through these. Uh, the Nautilus asks, mines inside derelict ships will be a nice trap, don't you think? Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. There are some Brilliant. great ideas for mines, mm -hmm. but they have a lot less to do with the Nautilus and a lot more yeah. to do with... With mines. With mines, right? The like, Nautilus the mines are cool. The Nautilus, who cares? Um, Actually, that's a good point. One of the things we should see in the fairly near future is a smaller mining, a mo smaller mine layer, because or or the ability to lay mines from other ships. I want the ability to take a mine on the back of one of the uh, like s the snub like a dragonfly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get. I want like a dragonfly add-on so I can fly that mine exactly where I want it inside a ship and then fly. You know, that's cool. Or you um, can like put it, or you can like put it in your backpack, yeah, and then like fly out there and like pull it in your backpack and like. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Bryce Serena asks: Has anyone had a chance to play Remedy's newly released game Control? And if I've not, good things. Why not? Uh, why not? Because it's like seventy dollars. Oh, that's a good point. Um, looks good. Interest in it, but. I'm not playing it. I did, however, just buy uh, Remnant Fallen Ashes or whatever it is, because it's mm. a it's a third person shooter Souls like uh, and... from the Ashes. Yes, Remnant from the Ashes. Cool. Is it uh, good? I don't know. I played it for ten minutes before the show, and I'm going to play more tonight. Um, literally just bought it. Um, can I, I, I? Can I? I go talk about things. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if I mentioned this last week, but I um, wait, um, I got a PS4 Pro recently. Nice. Um, so I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna delve back into the history of gaming and mention that I just finished uh, Last of Us, which is incredible. Everyone should play it if they get a chance to. Um, and I'm currently playing Horizon Zero Dawn, and wow. Eh, that's a good. Eh, hang on, hang on. Can I just ask you? You're playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Wow, not Horizon Zero Dawn, comma wow, as in World of Warcraft. Just because the World of Warcraft Classic launcher and everyone on Discord's playing that, so I'm not. Just, I said Dick the Duck. <laughs> I'm I not playing touch it with your cock. I'm not playing World of Warcraft Classic. Okay. I might play it someday. Um, no, I'm playing um, playing Horizon Zero Dawn, which is an open world game um and uh it was good is very well done i um, don't see myself playing another monthly subscription game ever i could if someone would make a good one it would have to be it would have to not be like those old arcade things that like they had the difficulty there just so you'd keep putting in quarters like, there's so much shit in WoW, but it's all so much the same. It's grinding so that they can mm -hmm. keep you paying the subscription for Welcome years. Welcome to MMOs! To... I know! <laughs> uh, if Super 5, if CIG do a subscription model to finance Star Citizen later on, I'm asking for a refund of every what penny that I... What if optional one? Option, what, do you know, what, get, you get. what do you get for it? No, I, the the thing the I think the question there is they've always they've always sort of talked about keeping their existing subscription going, which is just supporting their community stuff, and yeah, and that fine. But if they if they asked for 
a subscription to play the game, I would say no, and I would ask for a refund. And if they said it's, no, it's like against the foundational part principles if, of the game. If, if they said no, then I would probably take them to court in Canada for uh, breaking the number one promise at the beginning mm-hmm. of the game. Period. Like that. That to me would be that's it. If they didn't return it. You wouldn't really have, I don't think you'd have to take them to court. I don't think I'd have to either, but. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what law it would be in Canada, but it would be breach of contract over here. It would be the same here. Canada and UK's laws are very similar. It would be breach of contract. But regardless. Yeah. I, I would I, be I stunned if that was the direction I can't see them doing that because, yeah. Um. Um. The, but uh yeah okay. i just wanted to i i like really monthly subscription games how many are there even these days ff14 wow wow classic which i'm still kind of surprised they did lots of people but, have nostalgia eve online yeah that's right no i'm just surprised they charged a monthly subscription for it because it's like servers and they can they can that's why um, it might that, that that's a game that you could definitely see Swartor. going free to play. Swartor is free to play and subscription, but you should oh, okay. get the subscription. But it, it, yeah. Um, is Eve still? I think Eve's you can earn a weird one, isn't it? Yeah, because you can earn game time in game, but it is you, a it is a subscription, so it's sort of a yeah. weird hybrid. You've been able to do that for quite some time, but then they introduced mm-hmm. Plex, and it went a bit weird. I mean, let's let's be real here. Blizzard is dying. Activision is dying. EA is dying. Uh, Bioware is dead. Bioware is super dead. Like, um, oh, yeah. God. Talking of Bioware, have you heard the fucking decision that they've made for the next Dragon Age game? I don't want to hear it. I know Live action the... service. Think Anthem, Dragon Age. What? Oh, that's going to yeah. be garbage. That's why when, the main when... guy who was already who was writing it yeah, he left, fucked yeah. off. Yeah. They, they, that worked really well for Anthem, didn't it? Anthem stuff. Don't I mean that that's it's a kind of a different problem. Anthem was just like, what the fuck are we doing here, guys? Got no fucking clue. Whereas Dragon Age Four is, let's make money that we can sell, and it's like, how is this? I, mm. Games as a service are by and large bullshit, which is funny coming from you know. Well, actually, no, they've never really talked about games as a service being a thing with Star Citizen. It's been, it's a little different. But, um, yeah, um, Destiny was a disaster, pretty much. Um, Anthem's a disaster. Anthem was an un, just a complete failure. Division um, 2 seems to be doing okay for Ubisoft, actually. Yeah, Ubisoft is less evil, though. Ubisoft <laughs> is less evil. Uh, Ubisoft is... Pro- <laughs> they managed to shiver, shed some shiver. of their evil. Less. Not saying how say much not. less. Just yeah. less. Okay, yeah. I'll put it this way. Ubisoft is went through a period of making really shitty games, and they've pulled themselves out of that to make decent games again. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, Ubisoft has some of my favorite games out right now, and I am ridiculously excited for um, Watch Dogs Legion. And yes, Ubisoft did really bad shit, but they have been doing a lot better. Yep. And Watch Dogs, they, they Watch Dogs Legion, they were That's horrible. Great. They were absolutely atrocious to the point that I was like, I'm done buying Ubisoft games. They have turned that around, and basically, they turned that around when they looked at what was happening to Assassin's Creed with uh, Unity, I think it was, and said, "Okay, we are no longer making good games." And we're not going to survive as a company if we don't. So they stopped it and they went on to like, they, they've improved since then. Um, the wow. problem is that things like Activision, EA, uh, Bioware haven't done that stop and self introspection yet. So interestingly, um, so you may have heard a little bit of the, about Division 2's uh, sales problems at the very beginning, um, right when it came out. Yep. 
um, they had some problems with getting it to sell in physical launches. Yeah. But then they released it on EGS and Steam. Yeah. And it's now sold 10 times more than the original game. Yep. So, wow. <laughs> oh, no. They're, like, they are doing really, Ooh. really good. Um, That's a big improvement. Miami Bat, if you're thinking of Assassin's Creed, uh, the Egyptian one, uh, Origin, is really, really good. Um, the Greek one, Odyssey, is in some ways better and in other ways much, much worse because it is so big. It's got the same friggin' <laughs> problem as Star Citizen. The map is so large. I put like 30 or 40 hours in and I think I had covered maybe 30% of the map. It's ridiculous. It's Can like a 100 hour say, game. <laughs> don't yeah. take Eris's word on the Egyptian one. He's in denial. Oh, God. That nice. Okay, we got three more questions. I want to get to them quickly. The Naughtierless asks, uh, spamming with mimes again. Mimes? Spamming you with mimes. Uh, how do you guys feel about <laughs> mimes in races? I would love to see mimes on the sidelines and during races. That would be great. Mm. Although, given how fast they're moving, I'm not sure I'd be able to see them. All right. Uh, mines during races would be a wonderful trick to play. Uh, I'm still waiting for turtle level races because turtle races were the races where every ship is fully armed and you can just kill your opponents to win. <laughs> that is lore. That is a lore nugget coming from me back when I still read the lore. I like that. Uh, I like Ashley that. asks. Um, I also would love to see someone try and shoot an M50 because you ain't going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Um, Ashley asks, I have a dystopian-themed Halloween party coming up. Any ideas for costumes? Um, but, dystopian but, theme. Hmm. You okay sure has got something. I'm not repeating that one. Good. Uh, dystopian? I don't know. Go well, as... Go as a, uh, a rouse. Chipjacker would be good, actually. A rodent of unusual player. size. A rodent of unusual size. That's a good one. Go as a um, rouse. Any character from Last of Us would work. Uh, and Tony, you know, <laughs> Zuravec asks, how can they make manual mining by hand competitive with ship mining very easily? Not being, not having to have a ship. One, you don't have to have a ship. Two, mining by hand, you can be a lot more precise than in a ship, and you can probably target exactly the specific, like, high, high value materials that you want, maybe in small amounts, but you can get, because, uh, like, one of the, talking about the gameplay of, like, the Orion was basically just taking apart an entire asteroid and strip mining the entire thing, whereas... Shiver, what's wrong? I'm fast cap. Oh, okay. yeah, man. Horrible, <laughs> horrible oh, thing I was laughing at. oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes anyway. I just ignore the chat and I feel like I'm a happier person for it. Sometimes you're right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, go ahead, David. I don't know. I don't remember what I was. You're talking about strip mining using a manual laser. <laughs> well, no, because using a manual laser, you wouldn't be strip mining, right? The, Ori the Orion's purpose is just to destroy yeah. the whole thing and mine it all out, which is great, but takes time. Whereas if you went in and just, I want this thing, bzz, yeah. grab it, go, you're not going to make nearly as much, but you also don't have an Orion. If you have an Orion, you're not going to be hand mining. Yes. No, that's true. Like, I mean, especially if, like, I really hope they adapt the, the mechanic for that so that you can go, you can, like, maybe it'll take a little bit longer to scan, but you find the right part of the rock that has the most of what you want in it, and you can just, like, zip it out with a yeah. hand mining laser and then just run off to your ship. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds a little boring. Like, like, cookie, like a cookie monster. Uh, no. Thanks, Elon. <sighs> <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a drill. Um, we are now done. Thank you. 
Well, we're done the show and the questions. It's perfect yeah, timing. It's perfect timing. We're done the show. We're done the questions. We're done uh, literally everything. Uh, it's been great. Uh, thank you to Hermes and Nakara for doing video thingies. So I had videos to throw at the screen. Um, uh, you, Miami, you narrowly evade, avoided my singing, but I did actually sing earlier. So sorry about that. Um, thank you, Sunjammer, for the frankly excellent teardown of uh, Pillar Talk uh, yep. in in the transcript channel because I basically just used that the entire time because. Um, it was quite on point. My question is, David, before we go. Yeah. What's up? Oh, you, you probably can't even look at that, can you? What? Um, what do you think of this gun? I'm dropping links into chat. Because you're the, you're the gun fanatic. Ah, don't like it. No? I've never liked alien-type guns. Like... Ooh, let's make them alien by making them like weird and elongated and wavy. Why not just make them cool? You know it's what like I really a fish. Yeah, you need a uh, license to gill to use that. I I like it. Doesn't look like the gun in control, but the gun in control looks damn cool. Like it's all these weird little squares that like move all over the place and stuff, and I love it. Um, yeah, yeah, uh. That said, it's 4 p.m. Uh, in two hours, go check out uh, Paul over at the Astro Pub. The Astro Pub. And uh, hey, we'll we'll see y'all in a week. Thank you, everybody, for coming and joining us and uh, watching us talk about Star Citizen and the. Uh, I hope I hope the, I hope that times. my I hope that my anger didn't make too many of you. Uh, uncomfortable or, or hate me because I'm really sorry if that's the case. Uh, I just wanted to apologize before we head out, you know, so uh, thanks everyone. Just a, just a reminder, everybody, that David's going to be randomly disappearing here in the next month or so and won't be back for a while. So I mean, um, no, I will be back. We didn't burn him. I well, will I be back. I don't want you to be... promise that you'll be back when you, when you, you're you going to be in a coma for like a month with a ch child, so... Uh, no, but that's the point. I'm I'm making a point to I'm gonna try and come on one of the earlier streams with baby and just sit here with baby. And if baby's screaming, then you guys get to just sit with me while baby screams for an hour and a half. Oh, being on an and, and that's the podcast. No noted. N bye bye. Noted. Bye. Bye everyone. Have a lovely weekend.